everybody, Andrea here with Dental Oil Tutoring. So you might be wondering, what do I have to know about dental implants and the bone for the dental assisting or the dental hygiene board exam? So they are going to ask you questions about this. A lot of people wonder about dental implants, especially depending on where you're located. They may or may not be a popular thing to do. You might just go to a bridge instead implants aren't even talked about only the rich get dental implants you know there's many different myths about it but you do have to know about it for the board exam so i'm going to go over a couple case studies questions with you and then i'm going to talk about it a little bit more of what you do have to know for the board exam so these case studies that i'm about to go over with you they are the same case studies that i have inside my vip board exam prep academy so definitely check out the full course if you are studying for the board exam and you need help. We go through different topics every single week. There are new case studies, mock exams, quizzes, lectures, um, teaching videos such as this one. You will learn so much and you will be confident in passing that board exam the first time. I still maintain a 99% plus success rate helping students pass on their first attempt. I've been teaching now for, oh my goodness, about 18 years and I do it all online so I would love to help you. But let's go through some questions. Are you guys curious? So let's see how you all do. So a patient presents with a missing tooth and desires a dental implant as a replacement option. After conducting a thorough examination, you discover that the patient has insufficient bone volume in the area where the implant is, pl is planned. According to implant dentistry principles, what would be the most appropriate step? So I'll let you guys read through the questions a little bit um, and feel free to pause the video if you need to take more time reading over the questions. I'm going to go through them over with you too. So like I said, pause the video if you don't wanna hear me rambling on. So dental implants, what are dental implants for? They're to replace a missing tooth, but not everybody can automatically get a dental implant. It's dental surgery right within the bone, but more people can get it than they think. You know, would you place a dental implant on a 99 year old? Probably not because they'd be spending two to four thousand dollars depending on the type of implant where it is um, and they will have that that dental implant for life but it goes without saying they're 99 years old how long are they going to keep a dental implant so that might not be the best option if somebody's 18 years old and misses a tooth is missing a tooth in an accident are you going to put on a dental bridge even though those other two teeth adjacent to the missing tooth are perfectly fine? Or are you going to do a dental implant? You will probably do a dental implant, depending. Some dentists might want to wait until that patient is 19 or 20, or some say 18 is the perfect age. Why not? Everybody's different. But in this case, you guys, let's look at what it says in the question. So there's a missing tooth. They want a dental implant. Um, but the patient doesn't have enough bone for that implant. Bone is important because what happens when you place a dental implant without enough bone? It can fall out. It can fail. So the patient spends all of this money and then, uh-oh, not good. So reading through all of these questions, what do you feel the best answer is? The best answer is A. You want to proceed with the dental implant as planned, utilizing bone grafting techniques to augment the deficient area. So does this make sense to everybody? You don't just automatically want to say they can't do the implant because there's not enough bone. How do you know if the patient doesn't have enough bone? You took x-rays, right? But you don't just want to automatically say that, although that will be in your mind. It's like, uh oh, okay, so this is going to be more complicated than we thought. Are they going to want to go through bone grafting procedures? Maybe not, but maybe they are. We can't make that decision for them. We need to ask them. So we wouldn't say, no, sorry, it's not suitable. We're just going to give you a crown instead. What about C? So C is to delay the implant placement and monitor the patient's bone levels over time to assess that natural bone regeneration. Well, bone doesn't come back. So C can't be the right answer, right? It just can't happen. And then D, would you refer them to an, an oral surgeon for a complex bone reconstruction? Well, we didn't even talk about anything being complex. We just said they might need a bone graft. So that's why A is the most correct. Does that make sense to everybody? Would you like to go over one more? Let's do one more. 
So a patient presents with multiple missing teeth and is interested in dental implants, so same type of thing. During the assessment, you discover that the patient has a systemic condition that affects bone metabolism, uh-oh, leading to poor bone density. According to dental hygiene principles, what should be considered when discussing dental implants for this patient? So other things you have to think about. They have a systemic disease. So feel free to pause the video if you need to think about this a little bit. We're going to go through the answer right now. So D is the best answer, and I have the rationale here for you. So basically, you want to consult with the patient's healthcare provider to evaluate their bone health and, and determine if they are suitable for implants. Now, patients with systemic conditions affecting bone metabolism may have compromised bone dense, um, density, which can impact the dental implants. It is essential to collaborate with the patient's healthcare provider to assess their bone health and determine if it's still appropriate for implants. So they're not writing them off completely. Um, so working together with their team can really help determine it. But it doesn't look good, does it? I mean, if they if it affects bone metabolism, leading to poor bone density, that can't be good. The implant might fail. So maybe let the patient know that if they really wanted the dental implant. But let's go through the other answers. So it would not be A because... It doesn't necessarily say that this patient has poor bone density, but their condition could give them poor bone density. So there's nothing concrete yet. So that's why A is not correct. B is not correct either because you can't just go ahead blindly with a dental implant when you know all of these factors could cause the implant to fail. And C, well, to recommend alternative treatment options such as rem removable dentures due to increased risk of implant failure isn't wrong. It's good to discuss alternative options, but that's still jumping the gun. Um, jumping the gun. You still want to consult with the patient's healthcare provider to go over all of this, or you're not doing your job. We always need to work together as healthcare providers like doctors, dentists, nurses, chiropractors, all of that. We need to work together so the patient has the best care possible. So you guys, this is part of the case studies, um, implants and bones case studies that I have inside the VIP board exam prep academy for dental hygiene students and dental assisting students. So there are two separate ones. If you're a dental hygiene student taking the board exam, you want to join the VIP board exam prep academy. If you're a dental ass um, assisting student, hygiene student, you want to be a part of this board exam prep academy. There are two separate courses. There are new weekly classes online. Everything's done online. Learn at your own pace. If you want to go ahead with kind of what I'm teaching you per week, you can. I give you kind of an outline of what to study per week if you decide to do that, or you can join anytime and just sort of learn at your at your own pace through each module one by one. After each module, you will have new case studies, new mock exams, teaching videos, all kinds of things. And I update the course often. This isn't the type of tutoring prep course that's updated maybe every three years where you'll see a power point for from like 2019 no this is updated at least yearly it's usually two or three times a year so everything's new depending on when you're watching the video i just added new case studies today so depending on when you're watching the video so let me know you guys have any questions i hope this helped clarify a few things about dental implants and i am always here if you need help thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one